Tristan da Cunha lies in the South Atlantic, 2,800 kilometers from South Africa and 3,500 kilometers from South America. It's the most remote inhabited island in the world. It's close to the Roaring Forties, a belt of high winds and stormy seas around 40 degrees south. And it's only accessible by boat across some of the roughest seas on Earth. This is actually a group of islands, though only Tristan itself is a permanent settlement. But all of the islands abound in wildlife. Each evening, hundreds of thousands of great shearwaters that have been feeding in the rich waters around the islands assemble offshore, ready to return to their nest burrows as darkness falls. The seas around Tristan are rich in marine life that supports both wildlife and people. The islanders run a carefully controlled fishery for lobsters for commercial markets. They also catch fish for their own use, but are careful not to overexploit these precious resources. So the waters around Tristan remain vibrant with life. Shoals of five finger are abundant. And there are also some surprisingly colorful fish down here. A Tristan wrasse looks like it should be more at home on a tropical reef. fish swim through forests of giant kelp, which can reach 45 meters in height. These forests can develop remarkably quickly, since giant kelp can grow at over half a meter a day. And weaving through the kelp forests are creatures that share the marine harvest with the Tristanians. Subantarctic fur seals, and northern rockhopper penguins. The fur seals seem to like showing off their swimming skills as they dance and pirouette around divers in an underwater ballet. The rocky shores of the islands provide places where the fur seals can haul out to sunbathe. And it's here where they raise their pups. Almost hunted to extinction in the early years of the 20th century, their numbers are now recovering. Perhaps three quarters of the world population of northern rockhopper penguins nest on these islands. Their population on Tristan itself seems stable, but elsewhere numbers have fallen. On some islands,
perhaps this is due to competition with growing fur seal numbers. Even so, Tristan de Kuna remains vital for the future of this charismatic penguin. The Tristan group of islands is also vitally important for the Atlantic yellow-nosed albatross. Although they range far and wide over the southern Atlantic, all of them return to the Tristan Islands to breed. High above the village on Tristan itself is a plateau covered in forests of dwarf tree ferns. And sheltering amongst the ferns, the albatrosses rear their single chicks. They nest on all of the islands in the group, but the largest population is here on the main island. Like many islands elsewhere, these seabirds face a problem from rats that have escaped from passing ships. But here on Tristan, the islanders do their best to help their unique albatrosses. Once a year, on ratting day, all of the Tristanians turn out to kill as many rats as possible. The Tristanians have been as careful to look after the islands as they have the seas around them, and Tristan remains a real jewel of Britain's treasure islands. By conserving the islands so effectively, the community on Tristan has ensured that the resources of the island can be passed down from generation to generation, including the unique species of Tristan, such as this spectacular Atlantic yellow-nosed albatross, which occurs nowhere else in the world. This whole island is a perfect example of how balance can be struck, whereby wildlife and mankind can survive together in harmony. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini-documentaries possible.